Okay, impromptu Zimmerman video. Woohoo! Probably gonna roll a cigarette during this video. Because this one's almost out. It was a button. I'm smoking it anyway. Pre roll. So, yeah, lots of interesting prosecution witnesses in the Zimmerman trial the last two days. Okay, there was one woman, uh, an, I believe, of Indian ethnicity, that uh, said, oh, I saw him running from left to right out my back porch. That would be from the dark part of between the, you know, between the units to the T where George admits to being. It was funny because O'Mara was like, well, you never said left to right before. You only said there was running back there from one side to the other. You never said it was left to right or right to left. Well, right to left would be from the lit area into the dark area towards Trayvon's house. Left to right would actually be better. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, anyway. So there was another woman. Oh, and that woman, let's see. Did that woman say who was on top? There's two of these witnesses that say that they saw the big fat guy, George Zimmerman, on top first, but whatever. Okay, there's a, there's a Howley woman that saw down in that area, and, and all, all these witnesses say they were well south of the T. So that's another thing here, a little tangent for a moment. Zimmerman says he was attacked at the T and went straight down. And then in the walkthrough, he's like, well, maybe I shuffled a little bit this way. And then he's standing about a third or a quarter of the way, like 10 feet from the T, and still a third or, you know, 30 or 40 feet away. Seems like to me. I don't know. It's hard to measure. I measure that it's over 40 feet, but whatever, from the T, where the dead body is. Now, Dee Dee... What's her name? I'm, I'm not going to be able to remember all the names. I'm, I'm, this is Witness 8. Is it Rachel something or whatever? Yeah. Um, she's interesting. So, an interesting thing about her is, is that, okay, so she's heavy set. She's not Trayvon's girlfriend, as had been reported. She, but she talked to him a tremendous amount of time, so that's interesting, but not material, that, that fact. And um, the thing is, with, with Americans, it's not necessarily a true thing, but if someone doesn't seem too bright, Americans tend to trust them more, right? Like me, people think I'm smart, and so they... Even though I'm honest as fuck, I, I don't try to fool people. Um, you know, they'll think, oh, he's, he, he's smart enough to lie to me, so he probably is. It happens on YouTube as well. And, uh, you know, I see this. But see, so the interesting thing about someone like Dee Dee is, like, she doesn't come across as super brilliant. Like, the idea that she could, uh, that she could, like, retain in her memory some coaching or anything is it's, it's not particularly believable now maybe she can you know racism would say oh well she's she's black and stupid black people are still good liars <laughs> I don't think it's come gonna come across that way to a to this all fem female jury but maybe um, but it sounds a lot like, you know, I mean, the computer records from the phone company say that she was on the phone with Trayvon. I don't think that's going to be doubted, and she has a pretty consistent story. 
I mean, the defense attorneys are basically trying to say, hey, you said there was running. You never said left to right, things like this. You said it was shadows. Now you think you know who's on top. Just because you found out who was heavier than the other person. Things like this. Now the defense witnesses to come up, you know, are going to be a different story, right? These are the prosecution witnesses. The story they're telling is that there was an argument up near the T. It somehow turned into a dispute. It kind of makes it seem like George maybe is, was trying to, you know, he was arguing with Trayvon. It makes sense that he would try to uh, restrain Trayvon until the police arrived. But since he's nuts, he might not mention that's what he's doing and just, just convey to Trayvon that he's trying to uh, arrest him in the sense of stopping him and controlling his action. Arrest meaning stop, right? <laughs> So, let's see, what else happened? Um, I guess three witnesses that's, that are sort of pro-defense <clears throat> in the sense that they do not support the, the beginning of the fight. Now, when, when the witness comes along that's going to say, oh, I, I looked out my window and he was in a martial arts pose, or whatever he's going to say. Um, that, that dude, I, I don't know, it's going to be interesting, because one of the witnesses they've showed so far saw him out there. He didn't actually get involved until like shortly after the incident he did open his thing and, and get involved by calling out to Zimmerman and or Trayvon or whatever what's going on stop fighting there's actually a lot of uh, witnesses to this event if you ask me so um, <laughs> this girl Dee Dee did not want to have to come back tomorrow. She's like, when she found out she was going to have to come back tomorrow, she's like, what? Are you kidding? I'm leaving today. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> oh, this is sad. But, um, yeah, it's an interesting part of the story, but I don't think it looks bad for Trayvon that he was talking to her. This is like, well, well, he had this friend, he knew her, he, he just met her recently again, but he had known her from kindergarten, and he's like, yeah, hey, we're friends, that's right, I remember you from elementary school or whatever. So I don't see how that looks bad for Trayvon. Um, she doesn't really seem like she's lying to me. Of course, the people that are anti-Trayvon will go, oh, she's just lying, all these people are lying. Maybe. This part of the trial is hard to tell because, you know, what we see, we see them debating, should we do this? We're like in the uh, witness, no, in the, uh, well, whatever, the, the trial room, where we're like in the trial room, unlike the jury who shuffled out and in, to control what they see, right? So it's hard to pretend, oh, I'm the jury, I don't see this part. I've watched the, uh, pretty much the whole things. I watch, uh, when I wake up, I watch the second half, and then somebody's posting on YouTube the first, I mean, the whole thing. So I watch the first half, after the second half. Um... I mean, I still think that uh, George Zimmerman is is going to go down. Why was he following uh, the kid in the first place? And it's going to look like he followed down into the dark area where the kid, where the corpse was. 
and uh, so we'll see how it works. I'm, I, uh, I, I think George has a few things, uh, some explaining to do, right? Yeah, so I hope George gets up on the stand and does that splaining. That should be fun.